Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to learn MVC six uh, MVC six application. Um, so they recently they started building up ASP.NET five and MVC six uh, MVC six uh, project, and it's and it's in the, still in the release candidate. So they're working on it, uh, but still uh, thought of just show uh, what they're trying to build on. And what are the difference we see from MVC five and MVC six? There is some confusion between MVC five, MVC six, and ASP.NET five. I think they are planning to change the name from ASP.NET five to uh, ASP.NET Core one point zero. So they don't want any confusion name. So they may they are working on to change to ASP.NET Core one point zero. So in future. Uh, the, the, new, the release will be called ASP.NET Core 1.0. Anyway, let's start uh, start creating this project. New project. ASP.NET application. So let's name this called Healthcare. Okay. And you see here there is something called ASP.NET 4.5.2 templates, and it's called ASP.NET 5 templates, but it's a ASP.NET MVC uh, 5, MVC 6 application. So also you see the differences when you click MVC for MVC 5 or 4. So you see you can able to select Web Form MVC Web API, and the ASP.NET 5, MVC 6, and they don't. Um, want you to select any of them because they're combining everything in one project. So let's go ahead and uh, click OK. Those who already worked on MVC 5, so you might be seeing the difference sooner you open this project I'll show you what the big difference from MVC 5 and MVC 6 many people are so excited about this new uh, MVC ASP.NET 5 it's also called ASP.NET 1.0 uh, core 1.0 which is a lot easier compared to uh, MVC 5. Uh, there are a lot of things changed. Uh, and um, okay, let's go ahead and open the solution explorer. The main thing is you see the difference. There is something called they added global.json file, and this is the project which is solution item. They added global.json, and the project structure is source, and um, they some they added. Uh, uh, something in the properties, something called launch settings.json, and uh, they have the project.json, app settings.json. So there are four or five JSON files are added, which is enable us to change, make the change easily instead of uh, changing the instead of changing the uh, C sharp file. So we can change the JSON file, and um, it's uh, much easier to make a change and uh, get to get the reflect uh, get the uh, web reflected immediately. So one of the example I can quickly show is um, so here uh, in this project um, we using version number 1.0.1 release candidate 1 so if the release uh, if the um, uh, version is changing so then then you come to the SDK and we change it immediately here it's very easy to change for this project and the launch settings.json which has the IAS Express application URL. So here we can change to uh, 51848. So when we click uh, 5, so in the local host, 51848 will be the local host um, site which will show our website. And um, they added um, profiles config which is uh, IAS Express and web. So in the debugs, we have IAS Express and web. So these are the profile they're keeping it in the uh, launch settings.json so it's easy for us to change it here and then whether to launch browser or not true or false depends on the reward and uh, also the hosting environment we can change to development production so it's we can um, the, the when you go for a higher uh, big project so we can maintain this json file to tweak 
when it's a production, we want this kind of config. When it's a develop, and we want this kind of config. So same like web config how we used. Now this is more easier to change JSON file with lots of properties in it. And uh, one more um, app settings JSON. So which has the same like web config, same like web configs, the connection string and logging, all those stuffs are in the, goes in the application settings JSON. And the project JSON. So where we have all the dependency DLLs. See here, uh, so we have entity framework DLL, and so here we can add the dependent dependency injection DLL also here, and also we have framework DNX four five one DNX core. So this is uh, mainly uh, used to support um, uh, the core uh, different environment like Win uh, Linux and Windows. So this is the main thing they're concentrating now to support the same project. You can open it in um, Linux environment and it will work, run. Uh, this is the one they're trying to achieve where sooner than later, so when people who works in the Linux platform, so they can open the same project and make a change easily. Also, they're trying to build a core, for core which will have the less uh, few uh, DLLs, which means few packages uh, just go ahead and open this difference so this few list of packages you can you can control what are the packages we can use and so it's much much like a, more like a packages rather than one whole deal will control the whole part so when the city will reduce the space and also we can as as, ne as we need it we can add more packages in it so the dnx is is called um dot net um execution environment right so these are the file changes also they added um, dependency something called bower and npm so the bower as uh, host those who worked on the front end they know what's bower and the npm is there it helps to bower helps to uh, install the packages javascript related packages so and the npm also the same concept for the uh, front end is this also helps to install the packages. The Bower actually keep all the packages, same like how Nugget packages works. So if you want to install the DL C sharp kind of DL packages, we quickly manage Nugget packages. In the previous version we always use manage Nugget packages for both the JavaScript packages also, but now we have another something called manage Bower packages. For example, we can if you want to install. Um, um, Angular. Before I open that, uh, let's click um, the root library. So here you see jQuery, Bootstrap, all those JavaScript packages. So if you want to install new Angular JS, we can say ang. So we can install Angular, um, Angular, Angular JS file. So just click install, and dependence Bower is restoring. You see that, and at the same time, it's installed the Angular JS file in our pack uh, library. Because now this whole this uh, pre-built packages helps us to like Bower and npm. It helps us to install uh, any JavaScript packages quickly not going through management uh, uh, the normal uh, manage another packages option right so this is the one cool feature they added right and um, we can go ahead and open uh, I was explaining about uh, project.json and project.json also has uh, publish exclude these are some to exclude this file uh, so when we publish in this project. Also, they have script pre published So before we start publishing, this has to be installed in PM and Bower, so which will help to install and also gulp for the build client um, JavaScript cloud build process. So that, this all config is already made up for us. So it's now our work is to just start build our project. So most of the thing made us easier. The other thing I need to find out uh, is MVC5. And six is almost similar, the same concept, how the controller and um, 
views looks like so see that you take a look at the one of the controller home controller it's the same similar like the way we had mbc5 and you see the views home views there's a big difference in views uh, i'll show you let me open one of the account registers use html the here you see that um, before we always have something called uh, for uh, input so we have uh, the at the racer view this is the racer view in the racer extension we have dot html dot text box file so those things are uh, they removed from uh, mbc6 and they ask they propose this new option called asp hyphen file email so now it's more like more look like a html form rather than the c shell so as long as we have the model here we can just call asp for email which will um, help to um, add the input box easily those who worked on um, racer view they may know some of the time they get into the issue of the dot net text text for sometimes it's struggled to make it work now it's whole html now we can add anything we want like it shows any css classes we can add so this intelligence is really great helpful to add any any web uh, any css classes the whole like a farm and all those things changed to anything started with ASP hyphen which is uh, which is the replacement for how we had like HTML dot for um, HTML for text box for or label for those things are replaced with this ASP hyphen file option there's a lot of improvement in this and um, they're also trying to make this whole uh, this new core uh, ABC6 framework is or ASP.NET Core and trying to make it faster, uh, make it faster. Uh, like they are comparing with um, uh, uh, Scala, so Scala is the one is now fastest when they're comparing, and then they are trying to beat their uh, performance. They're still working on it. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, when they release, it's going to be the fastest framework, uh, one of the fastest frameworks in the uh, current world, right? Um, that's all for now. Um, so we, in the next tutorial, uh, we'll try to integrate um, um, dependent, dependent injection, uh, the one tutorial which um, many people like to learn. Uh, so the dependent injection we will try to put an MVC five application or MVC six. So one of the thing, one of the application will integrate the dependent injection, and so it'll helpful for many people. So I'll work on the next tutorial, which will mostly uh, I'll work on the dependent injection. All right, thanks for watching. I'll uh, one more thing I forgot to tell at the startup.js, which is going to be um, same like global.cs file, so startup project, startup file. This has all the settings. So here we can say whether you want to load this project in a development environment or production environment. So it depends on the environment name. We can control this project how to load. So if it is this development, they're adding some uh, uh, methods like a secret. Same way we can, if it is development production, we can come up with um, uh, different um, methods to load. Also, this is the section we need to add our a dependent injection file also, dependent in injection call. And the configuration service, which is another thing we can do it. Uh, so here we see that uh, all the configuration so data entity default connection and connection string, which is loaded here. Um, so which helps to um, load the SQL server. So all those connection related um, and uh, dip, uh, uh, a SQL related con uh, code out also here. So we will concentrate more on this dependent injection in our next tutorial. So try to get into that. So once we get into that kind of world, um, so we can easily add a more other project which will have a domain project and implementation project. And then we will call those um, uh, implementation in this startup using dependent injection. So we may use. Um, um, either there are three different injection in unity artifact or ninjax so we can concentrate on either one of them uh, most probably unity uh, yeah even of them in the next tutorial I'll try to show the different injection uh, how it works
all right so thanks for watching uh if i made any mistake uh, forgive me thanks uh, so we'll touch base with the next video thanks bye